security business. Problem arise when under the disguise of offensive security, we start talking about reactive security. This is a relatively new emerging trend that incorporates attack res and response into a cybersecurity management framework. In other words, uh, reactive security as such has no legal basis in the private sphere because there is no possibility whatsoever to uh, react against a cyber attack. It is illegal if carried by a private entity. It could be a, a source of, the of serious danger. Indeed, the correct definition of reactive security should actually be retaliation, as it involves, uh, as the bullet point says, fighting back and not necessarily in, uh, in real time. As I said, real, uh, reactive security equals taking justice into one's own end. This is forbidden almost by any legal ju Western jurisdiction. You can go out doing uh, your vigilante stuff, even if you're not playing, you're not playing a, a cowboy with a, with a gun and you're just using your laptop. This is not allowed. There are some, some scholar or some sales manager that tries to advertise reactive security, claiming that it's self-defense. However, this is not uh, entirely, this is entirely a mistake because, because whatever the, the interpretation of the idea of self-defense within a particular jurisdiction, ev in every case, self-defense is a measure of last resort. So if you want to take the risk of practicing reactive security in the civil environment, you should be ready to provide evidence that that was that reactive security uh, was the last resort. This can be done, in theory, only by enforcing, by, by flanking the cyber uh, retaliation uh, tools, flanking these tools with, uh, with, the, with the sound cyber forensics infrastructure. Because when the, when the storm passes, uh, you need to prove the public prosecutor that you actually were in a, in a self-defense situation. So you need to provide reliable evidence that you had no alternative but to react, to shut down the, the threat. Think of reactive security uh, in a more physical dimension. Think that uh, instead of having your fully loaded laptop, you have a fully loaded Beretta. And think what happens when you pull the trigger of a gun, claiming that it, it is self-defense. That's exactly the same condition in which instead of uh, pulling the trigger, you push a button on your laptop. From a legal, from a criminal law standpoint, there is no difference whatsoever no difference whatsoever uh, between the two hypotheses, because what changed is just the, the tool that you are using for uh, retaliation or alleged self-defense, and not the, the will, the intent of your, uh, of your actions. When you move to, to the political level, reactive security creates more and more trouble than what we have already seen. Why? Why is that? Because if you react to a foreign threat, and now you understand why I say that the Cyber Solidarity Act and also the, the, the law 82 of 2022, if I don't remember, um, if I remember correctly the, uh, the naming, passed in Italy uh, last year, are creating a very dangerous diplomatic situation. Why? Because if you are, if you are attacked, in, well, if somebody from a different country, for a foreign country, uh, committed cyber crime in Italy, you have the pos you should have, you claim to have the possibility to retaliate. But you're not, you don't know against, in theory, against you are, uh, against who you are retaliating. I mean, uh, you can be attacked by criminal uh, organization or an individual criminal, or you can, uh, you can be the target of a state-sponsored attack. The situation from a legal standpoint is fairly different because if you retaliate against an ordinary criminal, what you are doing is uh, playing your vigilante game outside the Italian boundaries. Because believe it or not, this cyberspace idea that there are no borders, that cyberspace is something different, is just, pardon my French, bullshit. If you, uh, if you attack an, a system 
that it's in another country, what you are doing is committing a, an international crime in this country. So a prosecutor can, leg can legally uh, ask Italy to extradite you there to be tried and, and jailed if this is the case. If you are victim, victim of an attack coming from, from a foreign country, you cannot directly retaliate. You need to pass through the, the multi-legal uh, assistance treaties, meaning these international agreements that allow the cooperation between law enforcement in various countries. You cannot do it on your own. And if this attack comes from a state-sponsored actor and you have evidence that uh, the attacks come from uh, a state-sponsored actor, in this case, if you retaliate, you are committing uh, a violation, a double violation of sovereignty because you are committing an hostile act against a sovereign jurisdiction. In the very best scenario, that is going to open a diplomatic crisis. In the worst case scenario, according to the political need of the involved party, that could start, could start a war. I don't want to, to sound melodramatic, but this, is, but this is what reactive security is about. Attacking a resource located in a foreign country means committing an hostile act and keeping the st a state uh, responsible for, attack, for an attack of the citizen uh, would be like allowing all the rest of the world to attack Italy because uh, we have mafia and, uh, and mafiosi is, it are Italian citizens and mafiosi are committing crime in other jurisdictions. Of course, there is no match. This is a nonsense explained like that. So why the situation should be different when we when we are speaking about uh, action committed through a computer. In short, if a private company retaliates against a criminal, it can start a war. As it can start a war, the reaction uh, of a state against another state because of the, of the attribution uh, of the attack to a, a state-sponsored actor. That explains, by the way, why every country is very careful, even when it's clear that a specific attack may be state-sponsored, they are very careful in not raising this issue. They may claim some, the usual hush-hush, uh, secret squirrel uh, source can tell the newspaper, oh, well, uh, it is the American, it is the Chinese, uh, it, it is the Russian that are backing this kind of attack. But no, but no official statement usually gives the attribution to a state for any incident that happens, because the next step will be to call the army in. So the idea of practicing re uh, reactive security as a tool to enforce political interest uh, is rather da dangerous, because more than its use in the private sector can actually start a war. So we can, uh, we can uh, come to the, to the conclusion and then to leave the floor uh, to, to, this, the, to the discussion, if you're if you're still with me. Uh, traditional of, of offensive security methods actually do not pose a specific legal challenge. Uh, they are uh, more a matter of being able to draft proper agreements to design uh, a specific authorization to carry out the, the offensive security tax in, rather than uh, facing complex, uh, big legal, uh, legal challenges. Uh, on the other hand, reactive security, uh, it's actually problematic. Be that uh, a practice in the private sector or a method to enforce political goals, reactive security, it's a very, it's a very uh, delicate tool to, to handle that might explode in the hands of the whoever is using it and might ignite the diplomatic crisis and, uh, and even, uh, and even over war why reactive security has become a hot topic and a, and a pra practice that is more and more uh, spread in the cybersecurity field. Because as a matter of fact, there has been a change in the criminal ecosystem. Uh, governments of rogue countries or in general, government uh, of every state uh, have always 
resort to criminals and criminal organization to enforce their political goals. Uh, of course, not every, uh, every government does the same, but it's a fair assumption that when the need arises, uh, uh, even criminal can be uh, called in to, uh, uh, to pursue political, uh, political interest. Just to name the biggest example of that, when the US during uh, the, the Second World War needed to, to land in Sicily, they need the support of the local uh, uh, mafiosi to organize, to arrange the, uh, the landing of the troops. So uh, when, the, when it is necessary, the political level, once again, does whatever it takes to, achieve, to, to, uh, to reach the goal. And this is the main difference uh, with, uh, uh, with the judicial environment, where the, whatever it takes is not a justification for, uh, for assuming some specific uh, decision. So right now, the development of technology, the, the intrinsic vulnerability of our uh, infrastructure have uh, make uh, have uh, turned the cyber crime and cyber attacks into a very convenient tool to um, to uh, create disorder for political uh, for political means. Uh, that means that criminals become more and more useful for uh, for the sake of uh, fighting uh, hybrid war or undeclared conflict. Fact is, as Revil and other cases have demonstrated, that uh, judicial investigation on the other side can become a vector for uh, political uh, political goals, uh, and this is also true when we think of the involvement of the of the military, of the intelligence, and legal and private entities. That happens uh, not always on uh, clear uh, legal grounds.